Good morning, uh, the Freedom Games audience, uh, everyone at in EC1 and the ones who are watching us on their computer screen. So welcome to the third day of the Freedom Games. And we are started with a very strong subject. Our guest is Tomasz Sakielski, who has reported the offer, uh, uh, the offer of documentaries, television reports, prose writer, screenwriter, and director of the documentaries. Two uh, Konimów, we come just don't tell anyone, and playing hide and seek of 2020. The meeting uh, will be uh, uh, run by Joanna Łopat, who is a reporter cooperating with Duży Format and Oko Press. Let's welcome them with a warm round of applause. Good morning. <coughs> Good morning. I wanted to joke because it's Sunday, but I wanted to joke too. I thought that the first question will be to the audience. Have you been to church? Because today we will be talking about church. Do you agree? Okay, I can talk about church. Sunday is a good day to have such conversations. I have too many phones, I'm sorry. Tomek. Asha, your movie, Don't Tell Anyone, 24 million people watched it. In the 37 million country, it's a huge number. Uh, and the clergy movie uh, last year, how many people watched it? Six million? Yes, yes, more or less six million. Yes. But I wouldn't like to compare my movie uh, with clergy movie, Claire. Uh, you had to go to the cinema, pay for the ticket to watch it. Our um, film was available free of charge because uh, everybody loves watching free movies. Smarzowski uh, also uh, likes entertaining his audience. Uh, you have uh, referred to the subject, the topic which is very difficult. What is the phenomenon of this movie? Why so many people decided to watch it? Mainly because it was for the first time in Poland, victims showed their faces. They were talking very openly about the traumas and confronted uh, with their oppressors. So to many people it was shocking because uh, there were articles, uh, there was information that there's a problem of pedophilia among priests, uh, that it also happens in Poland. Some people were saying, no, 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 it only happens in the West. In Poland, the situation was different. And all of a sudden, the movie, which shows not just a single case, but several cases of several people who were raped uh, in their childhood, who were sexually abused, and nobody supported them in terms of the problems with the church. We also saw faces of their oppressors. We heard their voices, voices of people who didn't understand anything. None of the priests who, uh, who was confronted with uh, his uh, victims didn't seem to be someone who understood what he had done. There was no Apologies, no, sorry. What do you want to keep you quiet? You should have come earlier when I was the head of the parish, parish when I uh, could have paid you. So complete misunderstanding of the harm they had done. So all these factors contributed to the situation uh, when the public opinion was shocked. Uh, that uh, the movie uh, resulted in uh, many repercussions, including political ones. Uh, the parliament uh, was debating. So after the movie, the National Committee for Pedophilia was established. There were fears whether the committee uh, uh, would uh, want to deal with uh, church uh, affairs. At least it has some theoretical uh, capabilities and uh, uh, they are doing what they can, but the church uh, does, doesn't want to submit documents, doesn't want to give us access to the archives. And uh, Poland, that is uh, Polish states, that is the prosecutors, allows this situation, allows for the church to be privileged in this way. 
in my movie, uh, in my movie called uh, Hide and Seek, uh, we are showing uh, a dreadful situation where uh, a prosecutor uh, gives uh, all the documents uh, to the church, main church office. I am under impression uh, that the, your movie uh, just uh, in this, uh, put, put, put fire to the bomb uh, that is sticking. So we all knew that something like that had been happening. So what has happened after the premiere of your movie uh, with the public uh, opinion, social uh, reception? It's different when you think that something is true and it's different when you see something. So uh, the, the, the vision, the pictures and the evidence of the victims uh, led to this uh, situation. Uh, we live in the times of the image-based culture, so you can write thousands of shocking articles and only the image starts talking to mass audiences. So this is how it is. I don't want to discuss whether it's good or not, but it has helped me. I use the tool of documentaries, and nowadays it helps me to obtain a greater reach. So you had this hide and seek, and in this movie it starts with some speeches by the politicians. Schetina is talking to Karczyński. You don't know where the threats to our children come from. And Karczyński says it was us who started fighting uh, pedophilia. And I do declare that they won't be suspended in jail. Gucci summarizes that he doesn't uh, uh, watch rubbish movies. So tell me, which mechanism of the relation between politics and the church are revealed by your two movies, especially the, the second one. Uh, they confirm what we all know. Uh, the church is in partnership with the current government. Uh, we can be uh, angry with the attitude of the prosecutors uh, that is trying to um, to, to, to sentence the direct uh, um, oppressors. But uh, the indirect ones uh, are just revealed, uh, and then the, we know that the gen pro prosecutor general goes to uh, for a birthday party to Father Rydzyk, and you can hear Rydzyk when he defends uh, Bishop Janiak, who is the anti-hero anti of the other uh, movie, where he uh, gave the job in a parish to a pedophile priest. And he says everybody has temptations. He even uh, addresses the audience and who doesn't have temptations and the prosecutor general is listening to such uh, declarations and other prosecutors decide it's not worth dealing with such cases so we know that uh, minister Ziobro uh, is uh, impacting influencing uh, prosecutors and he tells them what to do at least in the sensitive issues so the relationship between the church and the state are very harmful in explaining these cases. Publicists, the right or Catholic publicists such as uh, Tomasz Terlikowski uh, uh, keeps repeating that the prosecutors have to go to the main church uh, offices, they have to start uh, searching through the archives and the institutions that are responsible for investigating crime should be uh, very severe in the decision towards the church. He's also talking about compensations to the victims and only determined uh, actions by the state uh, uh, bodies uh, will help us to improve the situation but we can see that still there is this temptation that uh, such uh, criminals uh, are covered. Uh, it's all the time delayed. So uh, the, the church has been operating for so many years and the church hierarchy does stopped realizing, does not realize that we are living in a completely different times that than 15 times uh, years or, uh, ago. So these cases will be revealed. Uh, they will affect the credibility of church. 
they will harm uh, the church community and they will harm priests, the honest ones who are in the church uh, because they have felt a vocation, because spiritually they want to help people. And it's a minority, such priests. When I speak to priests, sometimes they say we are all treated as potential pedophiles. pedophiles. So I always tell them, stop keeping quiet. Start demanding that the situation is clarified. Uh, demand that the bishops uh, really become uh, are kept responsible. So, uh, if the priests do not behave in this way, uh, the curia will not do anything. I feel uh, feel that they can do anything they like. In your movie, uh, the, the lawyer who's in your movie uh, talks about the dependence between prosecutors and uh, prosecutors and the church. Tell us about this regulation by uh, Ziobro. It was a letter that has been sent uh, to, to all religious associations and churches. It was drafted uh, for the purpose of the Catholic uh, Church, first of all, because the Catholic Church is the biggest uh, church and religious uh, association in Poland. So in his regulation, the, the National Prosecutor's Office recommends, instructs uh, that uh, the uh, church affairs should be treated very prudentially, very carefully, and it also encourages prosecutors to openness in the collaboration with the church. Uh, but unfortunately, this openness um, uh, meant that the prosecutor's office provided documents to the to the curia, and uh, it, the, the curia did not uh, pass the documents to the prosecutor's offices. So the prosecutors who have been involved in the cases, they know that these are the higher risk cases and that their immediate superiors are always following such cases and then their superiors are also watching the previous superiors. So according to the instruction, uh, such cases have to be submitted to the National Prosecutor's Office to make sure that the office knows that such cases are dealt with. Of course, it's explained that it's about concordate uh, to, to maintain good uh, relations but it's about controlling such cases to know which of them apply to whom. So my thesis is that they simply, they do not want to re reveal uh, information and just to, to help uh, the uh, church hierarchy uh, to, to, to remain silent and, and safe. Uh, the premiere of your movie was in December 2020. The Vatican uh, issued a an instruction. So uh, the churches are encouraged not to uh, reveal the archives to the civilian prosecutors' offices and courts. Well, Vatican has been behaving strangely, weirdly for many years, but um, all uh, the uh, all the representatives of the church hierarchy after um, after um, the office on, of John Paul II are obliged to inform uh, the Vatican uh, about such cases. Uh, so uh, Polish bishops have not uh, submitted such cases. Most of the cases uh, submitted in the recent uh, years uh, uh, were submitted to Vatican because of the actions taken by the Polish media. So most uh, disciplinary proceedings in Vatican against, uh, against the Polish priests are, are mainly uh, against the Polish uh, church. Poland is the leader in this context. So I agree with those who say that when the Vatican makes the decision, there is punishment, uh, there is a penalty for the bishop and usually he is banned uh, from uh, taking part in the in the services in their dioceses so it's not a 
severe penalties. But if we look at the church history, if we if we consider how it has been dealt with several years ago, it's a big step forward. So the, the evil has been named and it indicates co-responsibility of the church for these crimes. Uh, but Gucci, um, who has been uh, penalized uh, by Vatican and Vatican uh, admitted that uh, he didn't do anything to uh, prosecute ped ped pedophiles in the Gdańsk art archdiocese which uh, was working there so uh, recently uh, we that there was a big uh, party uh, during the opening of an investment and which was invited so the government is uh, not uh, embarrassed that uh, uh, they have uh, such friends as uh, Bishop Guch, so he's invited to public events. But I can see that this is changing. Uh, the church activities in the past uh, didn't take uh, place at all. Now something is happening. The Polish church is still not drawing conclusions. I can understand that the mechanism of hiding is uh, relevant for those in high positions. But when I was watching your movies, I was wondering what the idea behind is for priests who come from small towns or villages. And once they move to another parish, uh, they are like rewarded. You have to remember that the priest, every piece, p priest have their stories. Uh, then you have to remember that uh, there is always a supervisor responsible for their history. They also know something about someone else from the curia. It's like a mob. Everybody has some data, information about others, uh, alcohol, women, children that priests have there is a special fund paid uh, used for paying allowance there are also some financial issues we recently learned about uh, the money uh, that priests have uh, or how they cheat uh, and collect a lot of money uh, there are mutual links. The fact that uh, a bishop doesn't make a decision can result from the fact that the priest can have some information about the bishop or pe person from their surrounding. There is also the principle, once you are loyal, we are also loyal towards you. As long as you are obedient and loyal, we are loyal and obedient towards you. That's false loyalty, which helps avoid precedence. And the entire structure makes sure that whenever there is the enemy at the gate, we defend our people. It increases discipline and obedience among priests. Finally, it's easier to manage a priest that uh, has committed something wrong because then the priest will be more obedient and the bishop can always remember that. We also have to remember that uh, in Poland, the bishop is like a prince. Uh, parishes uh, are autonomous and we often hear the questions, why does not the primate uh, um, respond? He doesn't rule bishops. And that's the title which does not entail authority and power in the Polish uh, um, church. They are only responsible uh, towards Vatican and they are like feudal rulers uh, determining uh, where priests work and how much they earn. It is all intertwined and uh, hence 
susceptible to this uh, loyalty. When I was watching your video, uh, I stopped the frame and I took down the following uh, picture. We wish you, Reverend, m many uh, fruits in this new environment. There was also a, uh, an act uh, based on which uh, those who ha uh, hide pedophilia should be punished. I called uh, Joanna Schering Vilgus uh, to confirm data about pedophilia she created several years ago. In the list of people who hide pedophiles, there are 43 um, high level people from a church. It's one third because we've got. Uh, 130 bishops. It means that one third of them should belong in jail. Or at least the persecutor's office uh, should decide whether they uh, are subject to fines. Uh, everybody needs a sentence to go to prison. But we are coming back to what I'm talking about. Law and justice needs the church more than ever before the election in 2023. Every church will be the propaganda of the current uh, ruling party. We Can we imagine a situation in which uh, the general prosecutor announces uh, the campaign zero tolerance uh, for um, hierarchy in uh, in church. Uh, social changes occur, um, but as for the behavior of politicians, uh, we will judge them by their behavior. I remember Donald Tusk saying that no MP will knee in front of the priest and then the civic platform was participating in uh, meetings with uh, Jewish. Among politicians, I have seen a different approach. I mean those from the central and left-wing parties. Definitely, it won't be just like at the beginning of uh, 2000 when the church uh, received uh, a lot of land and when the property commission uh, was operating. There are many more um, issues which can be detected, but uh, I'm sure there won't be a return to such a silent deal that no matter who rules, the church is uh, treated in a special way. Only the right-wing parties treat uh, church this way. Politicians uh, have understood that the hierarchy church is on the side of the law and justice, and we shouldn't hope for the church's neutrality during election. We only have to see what will happen after the election and to what extent uh, the changes will occur. Still, it's strange to me that uh, in a country where uh, a lot of people declare they are uh, believers, but uh, I would like to ask you about the further lot of your uh, anti uh, heroes. Uh, that will be one more question and then I'll give the floor to the audience. Well, what happened to them? Some of them uh, died uh, naturally and uh, escaped uh, justice. But actually, all bishops behind the scandals we showed, all of them, enumerated in our films got sanctions from Vatican. Vatican confirmed that they were misbehaving in these situations. 
As far as uh, priests are concerned, nobody was sentenced, but uh, Marek Mielewczyk uh, has been lawfully has received a lawful compensation, which was uh, half a million zloty. The church, the curia, and the parish where uh, the crime uh, happened are supposed to um, publish apologies. His battle took 10 years, but he can feel uh, he won. Anya Smisiewicz case is uh, ongoing. Bartek and Kuba, who were uh, in the second film, Jakub resigned, but Bartek won in court. The court decided it was a crime and a curia is co-responsible because it hid the priest and he's uh, supposed to receive compensation. These are the legal effects. I also wanted to ask about your uh, uh, heroes, your characters. Before we entered this room, we discussed responsibility for uh, for uh, characters, how do they feel after revealing what happened in public? It would be best to ask them. I call them from time to time and ask uh, whether they do not regret uh, being part of these projects and participating in these film films that uh, affect their lives. So far, none of them have regretted. But I also know that what happened after the films uh, was not easy. These are real people who showed their faces, revealed their names. They also decided to take part in a film, not knowing what consequences it uh, would entail, both in their professional and private lives. Many times have I repeated to them that I wouldn't be able to protect them. I didn't have any tools that would make them safe, that would make their families understand. And there are specific examples like Marek Mielewczyk, whose mom doesn't understand why he decided to reveal it in public and uh, fight for compensation. Luckily, she accepted that something like that had happened. She no longer thinks he lies, but uh, she um, reproaches him fighting for uh, justice. The case of Anya is similar. Her family doesn't understand her, and they don't understand uh, her going to court to get compensation and fight for herself. These are tough issues that will impact the life of some, of the lives of these people. So I'm really grateful that they decided to take part in my films. That's the moment when our audience, dear brothers and sisters, good morning. I have the question to have you compared the situation in Poland and in other countries in Europe? I'm asking this question because roughly I know the situation in France. From my point of view, it's shocking. Since 1950, people
people in church committed 216,000 sexual abuses towards uh, people uh, under 18, including laymen, it's uh, 430,000. Uh, at a certain point in time, the number of abuse decreased, and now uh, the uh, curve has flattened, and the number has not been reduced. I'm sure you know uh, the film uh, by Grass Dieu. Thank God, it was about uh, Cardinal Barbaron from Lyon, and the title of the film is Thank God it's over and nobody will harm me. He was hiding a pedophile. The case uh, was uh, reported to Vatican. They did not accept his uh, uh, quitting his position. I don't remember the exact figures, but uh, they were uh, sentences issued by uh, the French court to uh, send these people to prison uh, or for compensation, but only a, a minor percentage received compensation. We need to remember that France, which is the only uh, layman uh, um, country in Europe, because you need to know what it means. There are thousands of uh, Catholic churches. The film, thank God, was uh, recorded with lots of problems and the victims could not find justice for a very long time because the prosecutors did not accept their applications and the victims were afraid to report their cases because in the secular country, in France, we've got bourgeoisie and there is uh... Yeah, I started with a question. How do you compare Polish situation with other uh, European countries? We are at the beginning uh, of uh, this path of identifying uh, crimes and misdemeanors in church. It's not true that uh, this is the result of the last 20 years that previously between before 1989 there was no there had not been a sexual uh, revolution polish priests behaved in a different way but after 1989 when the rotten west uh, infiltrated poland and you could watch uh, porn videos or see magazines with naked photos, the priests uh, under the wave of sexual revolution got crazy and started to harm children. It had been happening for decades and it had been hidden. We are at the beginning of this route. I think that once we reach the end, uh, the scale of crimes will be terrifying for us, but already now, we know thousands of victims, uh, proven cases. I would say that, what well, you mentioned France, a special com committee was established there, which uh, searched uh, church documents and started preparing statistical data. As long as the Polish National Committee for the cases of uh, pedophilia gets uh, a mandate, statutory mandate, to execute uh, the access to documents. 
we won't learn the scale. Everything is there. It is not true that all victims will come willing to talk about their trauma or the silent part of uh, the institutional church decides to speak up and tell the stories. The state needs to act. And as long as the state doesn't act, uh, we are on hold with settling the accounts. Everywhere in the world, there must have been the single stroke that broke the camel's back. In Ireland, for instance, we learned about sexual abuse, murders, uh, mass graves. In the United States, there was a moment when FBI uh, started to capture documents and uh, search the files. Cases for um, compensations worth millions of dollars w were initiated. It shook the church and the church decided to do something about it. But still in the USA, there are many cases and many scandals being revealed, also including Polish priests. I would say we are just uh, um, somewhere at the end uh, of uh, this uh, process, meaning at its tail. Uh, journalists' work is pivotal here, and I'm very glad to see such documentaries as the one by uh, Marcin Gutowski. However, it does not suffice. The state needs to enter and act. And again, I'm coming back to what I said. We live uh, uh, in the times where I wouldn't expect any breakthrough activity of the state. Hello, good morning. I'm Marian. Uh, the lady was talking about France. I know about Germany where I've been work, living for 40 years. I came here to participate in the Freedom Games. My question is, uh, how can television affect and, and help introduce the church tax in Poland? Just like in Germany, where we have a church tax, Everything is more transparent. Many people decide to leave the church. Nowadays, in Germany, you pay 9% uh, from your gross income. And you can imagine how much that is. I used to pay 1%, then 1.5%. Uh, uh, then I said goodbye to this institution because uh, uh, the Pope said we are not allowed to uh, uh, collect condoms because of AIDS in Africa. On the other hand, the church in Germany uh, we, uh, our child was born in 1988. We wanted to baptize the uh, child. The priest uh, said it costed 200 marks, but you're not married, so I had to take double the amount. And we went to the bishop straight from the church. We talked to the bishop. Uh, and he asked whether we knew any similar cases. And the Polish uh, priest came back to Poland. So, has the question. I hear that. Uh, Several people from my milieu decided to leave the church and received this document. But what about this document? Unless there is no official uh, body where you can go and say uh, you want to part with the church, our hierarchs can still say 
We are a Catholic nation where there are 90% of Catholics and we want uh, the money. Here's the question. Uh, how can uh, television help to introduce the church tax in Poland? I don't know what television can do, whether they, whether it can make any broadcasts, but it's hard for me to refer to it. You call it uh, church tax. In my opinion, it's a good idea because it would uh, uh, verify how many people are willing to spend the percentage of their income on church. That would reveal how many people are involved enough to uh, spend some money they earn on the church. I would be far from a state body, state institution uh, registering whether we believe in something and why we believe in it. I would like the state to steer away from it. Churches shouldn't interfere into the state's operation. Right, I'm I'm for church tax, no longer, no more subsidies. I am in favor of uh, removing religion from school curriculum. If somebody wants their children to participate in classes of religion, it should be done uh, near uh, churches. The presence of uh, religion uh, teachers uh, at school consumes over one billion slotters. The money could be spent on employing psychologists or dentists. Uh, a program uh, was announced of uh, dental care uh, at schools. I hope that once uh, the ruling party changes in uh, Poland, we'll be brave enough to implement such changes. Uh, we can see the text on the screen. We have to close the meeting, but uh, uh, I have learned that we can extend 15 second question, maybe 20 second question. This is my question. Dorota Guzik from Kraków. I uh, am an activist. I will start again. I represent uh, enough of being silent. This is a civic action which is against clericalization of power land. We organize street protests. So I wanted to ask you uh, about three things. Uh, ten decades uh, of negligence in Poland, the work of journalists, of validity, importance uh, of uh, Journalists. So, do you consider? No, okay, okay. Twenty seconds have passed. Do you foresee a documentary about John Paul II, who have played, if not fundamental? Okay, I will answer this question. Hopefully, next year there will be a movie about Joel, John Paul II and his actions in terms of sexual scandals and sexual abuse that took place in church, not only in Poland. During his office, uh, we will see uh, what he was doing, what he was not doing. And uh, I would like to finish the move, movie on the cooperative uh, loan uh, funds, credit funds. Uh, I know that the premiere was to be held uh, last year in autumn. We are just about to complete autumn of 2022, but I do promise that I'm doing my best for you to see uh, this uh, movie about uh, these uh, funds. And once I finish this movie, I will start the movie on John Paul II. And my co-activist, uh, he is uh, talking about uh, the John Paul II uh, Republic of Poland. 
And the last question. Good morning, Marcin Adamuczak. As a citizen, is it possible that we will have an important change in Poland without the change, or maybe we should renegotiate the con renegotiate the concordat? It is possible, but it's all up to determination and beliefs of politicians. I do not see anything wrong uh, in the situation where states renegotiate uh, contracts they have endorsed. The Concordat uh, uh, is not an unlimited uh, duration contract, so it can be renegotiated. This document uh, can be the subject of uh, many uh, of, 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 of many changes. So, for example, you know, the minimum is that uh, the religion uh, classes shouldn't be held in uh, schools. But to do this, uh, we need to amend the Concordat document. We will see whether there is going to be enough courage to do it. To do it. The church has done a lot previously to be identified one, with one political party. The church will uh, do a lot of ugly things during the next uh, uh, election uh, campaign. So it will do a lot to make sure that the chapter of uh, the church uh, and the state is not just theoretical, but it's also practical. I would like to refer to your question, the lady's question. Church is like a mine with a mine of different uh, issues. I know that people tell you that you should make a movie about Father Rydzyk. Artur Novak, who, who, who was in your movie, they wrote a, a book with Stanisław Wabierski about abuses against nuns. There was an affair about nuns who are abusing uh, their beneficiaries. So there is the topic of orphanages, shelters, uh, uh, which are beyond control of any entities. The role of nuns in the life of church, the way they are treated, well, there is quite a lot of evidence uh, that they are used uh, as slaves, uh, they, they are sexually abused, and they are also used as uh, servants, uh, they are to clean, they are to uh, serve, so lots of topics, finance, it's another mine of information, selling land, churches, building sky, uh, skyscrapers, spa, um, hotels. So what has been happening before behind the closed door? Do you feel that uh, there is a narrow gap and we can see something, we can enter these institutions? Yes, I can see this gap. Uh, I can see that also many representatives of the clergy have become quite fearful. Of course, many of them are honest people who have appropriate moral compass, working compass, but since they are frightened of the consequences, they remain silent. It was easier for me as a journalist to gather secret information or documents from secret services rather than from the church. So the church uh, is, is, is sealed, it's very tight if you want to get some insider's knowledge. It's very hard to obtain it. I thought it was going to be easier, but it's uh, another challenge to, to, to reach, to find this information and confirm it. Okay then, so I think that we can close our meeting. Is it optimistic? <laughs> You have made the God happy. You can go home now. It's not always easy to recognize. It may look like this. Or like this. It may be a burden. But it is a responsibility that we embrace nonetheless. 
But if it means this for one person and this for someone else, maybe it ultimately means being there for one another. It isn't handed to us, but we know where to find it and how it feels, how it tastes, and what it sounds like when we finally have it. It means different things to different people, but for many, it means everything. And if we all fight for it, it will eventually bring us together. Atlas Network is, as the name suggests, a network, and it's global. We work all around the world. We're based in the U.S. We have about 159 partners in uh, the United States right now, and the bulk of our partners are outside, nearly 500 in total. Atlas Network, it connects people uh, from all over the world, defending the idea of uh, human dignity, uh, defending human rights and personal liberties. Atlas Network is focusing on, I think, the most important and moral cause in the entire world. We partner with local innovators, local leaders who understand conditions on the ground in communities facing real challenges. We look at the people from the worldwide freedom movement that are passionate, are ready to make a difference, understand local conditions, and we invest in them. At Atlas Network, we unleash individual ingenuity to enrich humanity. The United States does not have a lock on the idea of freedom and liberty. Those ideas are beyond borders. One of the main goals of Atlas Network is to eradicate poverty around the world. And we do that by investing millions of dollars in our partners' work every year. 
Historically, uh, wealthy nations around the world have tried to help low-income countries develop. The way we've been doing it traditionally has not really been working. So there's a movement to do development differently, and that means we need to step back as outsiders and rethink the role that we're playing in helping people in low-income countries achieve their dreams. We want to make the world a better place. We want to make the world a freer world. All of us want to leave a legacy and be part of something big to make a better world. This is exactly the work of Atlas Network. With our growing number of hundreds of successful partners, we're stronger than ever. Changing the world. Changing the world. Changing the world. Starts together with, with us. us.